Today we're going to talk about um, the uh, exposing the spirit of self-sabotage. Exposing the spirit of self-sabotage. Last week we was talking about uh, being in a sabotaging a relationship. But today we're going to talk about when you are sab sabotaging yourself. Because can I be honest, blessings, elder, can I tell you a lot of times we are sabotaging ourselves and we don't even recognize it. I got a definition for you for the definition of sabotage. Sabotage means it is a deliberate action to destroy, to damage, or obstruct yourself. It's where you intentionally destroy something. And that we got to begin to understand that you may say, Apostle, I'm not, I'm not intentionally uh, destroying myself. But I want you to get in the realm of the spirit. We got to begin to understand that when we find ourselves, when we have been hurt, we have been pained, we've been in ridicule, we've been cheated on, we've been lied on, we've been sick. And can I tell you, when we have not allowed the spirit of God to heal us, when we have not allowed the word of God to bring healing and to bring closure to unresolved issues that we have encountered in our lives, we begin to eternalize those situations. We begin to eternalize things what have happened to us when people made us feel any kind of way, when we felt insignificant, when we felt like we don't belong, when we uh, felt rejected, we felt sad. A lot of times we dealt with a lot of different things in our lives and we have not gotten healed. We just moved on. We just went to the next person. We moved on to the next situation. We moved on to the next city. Whatever that the case may be, but we never allow, blessed woman of God, we never allow the spirit of God to deal with us. And what we did was we sabotaged ourselves because you got to begin to understand when you find yourself being comfortable where you are and we're not allowing the spirit of God to deal with our hurt and to deal with our pain. We're in a day and a time people don't want to tell you that they're going through. People don't want to tell you that they're dealing with issues. A lot of times we think because people are normal. Blessed woman of God, we think because people look like they fine. They look like they work a job. They look like they get blessed and we just take for granted that people are healed and a lot of times people are not healed. Can I tell you I have found that even saints in the church, you, I have found a lot of people that they, they live in double lifestyles in the church. They one way but outside of the church they are evil, they're mean and uh, in other words they are sabotaging them. in other words they're sabotaging relationships, they're sabotaging their selves from the promises of God because they want what they want can I tell you when you're not healed you're going to be prayed that the enemy is going to use you. Why? Because your thought process, your thought process will mess you up. Your thought process will make you think that you well and you're not well. Your thought process will tell you you can handle it. Your thought process even will make you want something that's not good for you. And you got to understand that that's a spirit of self-sabotage. I want to come from 1 Samuel 
the 14th chapter, and we're going to look at even Samuel, even how Samuel felt with, with David, even with King, uh, 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 I mean King Saul. King Saul was already a king, and this is where we have already been in a place where we've been established, and we are insecure, and we felt like we're dealing with some stuff, and we're not, we're not allowing the Spirit of God to convict us. But when we don't do that, we will turn into a murder. Can I be honest with you? There were times in my life where I was sick spiritually and I was murdering people with my mouth. I was murdering people with my thoughts. Can I tell you that I thought that you know what? They made me hurt, so I'm going to hurt them back. Can I tell you a lot of times we feel like that, but we won't be honest. We want to put on a facade as if we're good. We want to act like we're fine. Oh, we're Holy Ghost filled. We're fire baptized, but in the church we're battling with jealousy. We're battling with envy. We're battling with um, competition with one another. When we're supposed to be on the same team, but we find ourselves trying to hurt one another. We got siblings jealous of one another. You got family members can't stand one another. Pastors can't deal with each other. Churches battling against churches. That's a spirit of sabotage because if we're supposed to be one body, there's no way where we're supposed to be hurting one another. And see, the thing is, the reason why we can hurt one another, because we're not dealing with the beast nature on the inside of us. We're not dealing with ourselves. We're not dealing with our thoughts. We got to begin to be honest with ourselves and begin to say, yeah, I'm jealous. Yeah, I want what they have. Yeah, I want a car, a car like them. Yeah, I feel like their life is better than mine. We got to begin to be honest with God and we got to begin to say, God, I need you to deal with this jealousy. I need you to deal with this hurt within me because see, if we don't deal with the hurt within us, guess what? We're going to be praying and you're going to want things that don't belong to you. You got a lot of women, some of the women in churches, they find themselves being attracted to the other women, husbands, and they know that it's wrong, but in their mind, something tells them that it's okay that I can be a better wife than she can. I can, because I'm finer than her. My breasts are bigger than hers. A lot of times, we come up with all these materialistic things, these, excuse me, these sensual things and these sensual things because it's coming from a fleshly nature. And you got to understand anything that comes from a fleshly nature, you got to know that it's automatically the devil. And see, and this is what we got to be honest with ourselves because with us thinking these thoughts, we're going to church, we're reading the Bible, we know what we're saying, we know what we're doing, we dislike people for no reason. We hate on people because we feel like they've been dealt a better hand than what we have and we feel like it's okay to talk about them. It's okay to try to make difficult, make things difficult for other people because we don't like ourselves. And the reason why you don't like yourself because you never took the time to allow the Spirit of God to heal you. A lot of times we try to make ourselves better by getting a nice house, the nice car, putting on the nice clothes. Can I tell you that's a facade, that's a band-aid because we're not dealing with the real issue. And we're going to understand if we're going to be delivered people, you got to be honest with yourself and say, you know what, I'm messed up. Yeah, I'm jealous. Yes, I'm insecure. And you got to begin to seek God for healing. A lot of times we don't seek God for he uh, healing because it's so easy to murder our brothers and our sisters. It's so easy to murder one another. It's so easy if you find somebody just get a house. It's so easy for us to talk against them. In their faces we're smiling, but behind their back we're dogging them out. And saying, God said, I'm not pleased because even in the church we have opened up our mouths and we act like we love our brothers and our sisters, but behind their back you trying to plot to take up, take some man wife. You trying to plot. You talking about the brother. You know that he trying the best he can, but you're not helping them. See, this is what that spirit of sabotage does. It don't care. It only care for itself. I told you, it intentionally destroyed. And we got people, we know that we are hurting other people. We got people that come to churches, and you know that you saying that I want, I want to get closer to the Lord. You saying I want to learn about the things of God, but when you get in the church, you find yourself doing totally the opposite. You're not trying to learn. You're you're not trying to pray. You're not trying to change your ways. You got to tell you, you got to understand that you are dealing with a spirit of sabotage because when you don't want to read the word, a lot of times we say, I want to know about God. I want to get closer to God, but you don't want to read the word. How can you get close to this invisible God? 
without getting in the word. And a lot of times we think because we can go to church. No, church is the place where it's supposed to help you to learn about him. And if you're not learning how to get close to him, you're not learning how to change your life. You're not learning how to have a prayer life. You're not learning how to retransform your thinking. Can I tell you, you are sabotaging yourself. The only time you got some people think, because if I just go to church, if I just check the box, if I just say that I just went to church, that God is going to bless me. No, it, it, it takes more than that. And so a lot of times we don't under, we, we, we don't want, we don't want to be held accountable. We don't want nobody to tell us, not understanding that's that spirit of Lucifer on the inside of us where it don't want to be told, I want to do what I want to do. I want to say what I want to say. And see, this is the same thing that got Lucifer kicked out of heaven because he sabotaged himself. And a lot of times we sabotage ourselves because we don't want to listen. We don't like the mouthpiece. Oh, she a woman like how I'm a woman. She put her dress on just like I put my dress on. And so you find yourself uh, sizing yourself up with the person that God has put in your life to help you. But instead of you looking at them as a help, you look at them because you're insecure. You look at them as a threat because you have not dealt with your issues. You have not dealt with your pain. And saying this is why God said we in the body, we got to we gotta be honest with ourselves. That's why when I first started, I told you, you got to be honest with yourself because I know that even this type of message, it's going to deal with you. It's going to deal with how you how you look at yourself. Sometimes we got to stop lying to ourselves. We telling ourselves, oh, we this and that. When really, when you turn off the camera, when you ain't around nobody, you don't feel like that about yourself. A lot of times we sat down, we cry, and we compare ourselves. We try to watch other people. We try to mimic ourselves to be like them. God, what's wrong with me? And God said, ain't nothing wrong with you, but you got to get healed. We got to get healed so we can begin to embrace, to be who God has called and ordained for us to be. Because can I tell you, Throughout the years, even being in ministry, there was times that I tried to pattern myself behind other people. I tried to begin to do what they was doing, not understanding that I was rejecting the call that God had on my life, and I was sabotaging myself. I sabotaged my, my ministry trying to look and do what somebody else was doing because I was rejecting the call that God gave me, and not understanding I was sabotaging my own self because it put me behind. It put me behind because God was waiting on me to manifest to who he called for me to be and I could never be who he called me to be if I'm around here looking like somebody else and seeing this is why we see what we see this that's right woman of God we gotta get healed because if we do not get healed you're gonna keep trying to look like other people you're gonna still you're gonna find yourself trying to justify yourself of trying to murder people because I have found out in the body it have been bothering me that there's so many saints are evil I have encountered people who I thought uh, people who I love people who I thought was my friend, people who I thought that was a member, a disciple. I have found people to be so evil and that that when, when they felt like they could not get what they want, when they felt like things were not working the way that they want, when they felt like I couldn't be controlled, it dumbfounded me how people would try to uh, uh, destroy your life. People would try to destroy your ministry. People would try to destroy your children. People would try to destroy your church because they got evil within them. And this is why God said we got to get back in the word because see the word is going to tame that beast nature on the inside of you. The word is going to, you got to understand the word is alive. When you read the word, you're encountering the spirit of the true and living God. So when he tell you to be angry and sin not, that's God telling you. And so when you say, forget that, I'm going to do what I want to do. You are rejecting God. You are rejecting the king of kings. When he tell you to forgive your neighbor, forgive your brother, forgive your sister, and you choose not to forgive, you are rejecting God. In other words, you're telling God, no, I'm not going to do it. And you got to understand you are not coming one with the word. And so when you don't come one with the word, you are automatically now operating in the spirit of sabotage. And so now them demonic spirits are going to come because you got to understand demonic spirits. The Bible said in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So your thoughts are spiritual. Your words are spiritual. So when you open up your mouth and you're thinking negative thoughts in your mind, you're speaking negative words out of your mouth, you are drawing demonic spirits to you. Can I tell you that even when we disobey God, God said, when we disobey God, you got to understand, you bring judgment on yourself. You bring curses on yourself. And a lot of times we get so 
uh, 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 prideful and so envious when we want what we want that we bring judgment. We bring in sin to our house. When you refuse to forgive, when you refuse to change and God told you to change, what you did have brought the judgment of God to your household. And you wonder why you're dealing with poverty. You wonder why you're dealing with sickness. You wonder why you're dealing with things on your job. The Bible say in Proverbs, a curse can't come without a cause. A lot of times you got to understand what our thoughts and gods and things that we're doing, we begin to cause the wrath of God to come upon us. You got to understand that even when I was looking, even I know I told you 1 Samuel 14, but the Holy, I hear the Holy Spirit saying something else. When you look at uh, Joshua the seventh chapter, not Joshua the seventh chapter, uh, when you look up, uh, no, go, yeah, go, go back to 1 Samuel. When you go back to 1 Samuel 15, this is when, uh, talking about Saul, this is when King when, 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 when King Saul, when, when, when God had told him to be king and Samuel had told him, God said, I want you to go to Agag and I want you to kill everything. And so when uh, verse 9 said, but Paul and the people spare Agag in the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fattest, the lambs, all that was good and were not willing to destroy them, but everything despised and worthless, they utterly destroyed. This is when you read this text. This is when Saul lost the kingdom. Do you not know that the spirit of God took Saul from being king because God told him, when you go and fight the Amalites, I want you to kill everything. I don't want you to save nothing. You got to understand what disobedience, disobedience will bring sabotage to you. Disobedience will bring a curse to your house. And a lot of times we got to begin to repent because God has told, think, has told us to stop doing certain things. God has told us to deal with our thoughts. Because see, you thought you can get away with it because you thought man didn't see you. But now understand that God sits high and he looks down low. He know our thoughts. He know our imagination. He know what we're speaking. And see, and this is where God, where, where, where Saul refused to listen. And when he refused to listen, he began to have the king of str uh, uh, stripped from him. But check this out. It looked like in the natural, it looked like he was still king. But when you go over to uh, chapter 17, this is where... David began to come on the scene and begin to understand that God began to anoint David to be king. You got to understand you will be replaced if you don't deal with this spirit of sabotage. This spirit of sabotage will get you at the will of God. It may look like you still in position. It may look like you still getting blessed, but you don't understand. Come on, I have disobedience. You got to have disobedience is a whole disobedience. And we got to be honest with ourselves. Yeah, God told us to leave people alone. He told us to cut that relationship out. Off. He told us to stop doing certain things. He told us not to make a if it's better to make a vow and not to make a vow, but we made a vow and didn't keep it. We brought judgment on ourselves. A lot of times we have spoke things out of our mouth. We spoke hurtful things out of our mouth where we curse people. The Bible says blessings and curses can't come out the same mouth. And we think that it's okay to curse people. You got people, they want to curse one minute, then they want to talk about God is good. You got to understand you're bringing curses on yourself. And you got to lot of people because they don't know the laws of the kingdom. You got a lot of people that are not reading the word of God and they think that they know God. Can I tell you, yes, God is a loving God, but God is not going to stop being God because of you. God is not going to uh, say, well, I'm not going to do it because of them. That means we all got to obey the laws of the land. And God said, judgment have come to even our nation because we are putting up with anything. We're marrying anything. We're changing our sexes. We're hurting people. We're destroying our children. People are offering up their children to Molech. People are doing abortions like it's a like like you changing shoes. People are doing whatever, all kinds of evil, and they feel like don't nobody know what I'm doing. I've been doing, I've been getting away with it, not understanding that you're wearing out grace and mercy. You got to understand grace and mercy has an expiration date. You got people that are trying to destroy people's marriage. You know that that's a married man, but you in your face trying to take him away from his woman. You coming as a distraction. You as a, 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 a single man trying to interfere with that man's marriage and you know that that's your friend and you trying to tap somebody's marriage. You got to begin to understand you are bringing sabotage on yourself and you got to understand that these curses, these curses, you got to pay for the curses. The Bible says even what we do is going to affect down four generations. What you do is going to affect your children, 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 children by what you do. And you wonder why we have so much affliction in our life. Why 
Oh, we got so much sickness, so much infirmity. You know why? Because people, have, that's it, woman of God, have become a satanic agent and you don't even recognize it. You live and you doing whatever you want to do and you feel like nobody don't tell me what to do. I read my Bible when I get ready. I can turn it on the television when I want to hear it, but can I tell you, if you, if you're not accountable to God, you are a renegade, a renegade is somebody that do whatever they want to do, because in the kingdom, it's subject to the king, in the kingdom, I may not want to forgive somebody, but in the kingdom, the king say, you got to forgive everybody, or I'm not going to forgive you, in the kingdom, I may say in my flesh, I don't want to love them, but if I'm going to be in the kingdom of God, he said, you got to love everybody, or you can't be a part of my kingdom, you got people saying and doing whatever that they want to do, and, and and God said, this is not me. You got people in churches where well, we're supposed to be helping one another. We're supposed to be banding together, pushing the kingdom of God. But we don't want to push the kingdom of God because I don't like the preacher. I don't like the fivefold gift. Who are you to tell God you don't like? You don't, that, 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 it's not your kingdom. You don't tell God who to choose. You don't tell God who to use. You, you got to understand, you got to be thanking God that he's using you. I can't tell nobody, tell God, well, you shouldn't have called him. What, what do I look like? telling the king that hey, he called me and see we have gotten beside ourselves and this is why God said we see what we see in our churches that's why our churches are packed but they powerless I'm going to say that again our churches are packed but they have no power they packed but you don't see nobody delivered they are packed but you see people they talking against one another they going with the married men they going with four husbands in the same church they thinking that they making the wife look bad which not understand God is looking at you when well, you got deacon going with the people in the ministry Going the the choir member going with the with the minister and all this kind of foolishness going on and the pastor got babies by in the in the church and people think it, it's secret you think don't nobody know and God said it's all a spirit of sabotage and we talking about we got God's church it's not God's church that's the church of the devil I never seen Jesus wherever Jesus went power manifest this is why you cannot get caught up in numbers because it can be a truck load full of people but you don't see no power yeah you may see the churches, but you don't see nobody being healed. You don't see nobody being delivered. You don't see nobody's life being changed. The only thing that they can tell you, I got a house. I got a car. Those things are good, but what about your mind? What about when you used to be hateful? Now God don't deliver you. What about when you used to deal with rejection, but God don't deliver you? What about when you used to be a witch, and God don't deliver you from witchcraft? What about when you used to be a whoremonger, but God don't deliver you from being a whoremonger? You used to be a homosexual, and God don't deliver you from a homosexual. You don't have people talking talking about these things no more. The only thing people are talking about is that now I got blessed and I got a bigger house, I got a bigger car, and I'm making all this money. But you don't, the Bible said, I want you to be in good health and I want your soul to prosper. How come people's souls ain't prospering? You know the reason they soul ain't prospering? Because they're still evil. They're still low down. They still got insecurity. You got some people are preaching the gospel and they are insecure. They hate their brothers and sisters. You got some people won't even like another sister post because I I don't want nobody to know I like her. That's craziness. How are we supposed to be on the same team? I don't want to encourage them because don't nobody like her. And I don't want them to know I told. We have gotten a, a bunch of people. We've been like Nicodemus. We want to, I think somebody had a post. I think that's what you did, Martha. Had a post saying that people want to love you behind the scenes, but in public, they want to act like they don't know you. How in the world are we talking about we love God and we can't even tell our brother and sister because we don't want nobody to know we talk to them. The devil lives a lot. And a lot of times, these people who we got problems with, it's people who we're jealous of. It's people who we intimidated of and we know that we need people help but instead of us asking for help we'll look at them and we'll try to shun people as if you got it all when your church is dead that's what I said it's dead because they will come behind the scenes you got some people they'll come and talk to me behind the scenes but they don't want to say nothing because they're in a dead place and they know that they need help but the leaders because we're being prideful because we have some of us have not dealt with our issues we have not dealt with our insecurities and we don't know how to help the people so prosper. We have not even allowed our mind to prosper, but we're holding people in captivity. People need to be delivered in our churches, but people are stuck because we are prideful, because we have become agents for the devil. We have built our own kingdom. And God said, this is not a me. This is a spirit of sabotage. You're sabotaging the church. You're sabotaging people. And the spirit of God is not pleased with us. He's not pleased with us. 
We, we, we want to hide behind the scenes and we saying that we love the Lord. He's saying that here we have no fear of God. We continue to do what we want to do because we figure God haven't did nothing yet. I've been doing what I've been doing and God ain't said nothing yet. I've been sleeping around and God ain't said nothing yet. I've been tearing up people's marriages and God ain't did nothing yet. And these devils are so bold enough. I have people told me that they came to tear up my marriage. They came to tear up my churches. These spirits are bold. And people say, who in the world, why do you come and teach the way you teach? I teach the way I teach because these devils came at me boldness. They came at me and told me that they came to tap my church. They told me they came to tap my marriage. They came to destroy. And so if you got a devil telling you they coming to destroy, who am I to be? Oh, it's going to be all right. Why you want to do that to me? Do You got to understand the Bible said when the king of suffer violence, we take it by force. You got to understand the devil will set up a plot against you. You keep on acting like in your mind, you battling with depression. You can't move. You can't go forward. You stuck in the past. You got to know something is wrong. You go into a church that can't break you out. Something is wrong with you. You rather be loyal to a man. Loyal because this grandmama church. Loyal because we've been here for 15 years. I'm not going to die in grandmama church. I'm not going to die in mama church. If I know mama church can't deliver me, if mama church can't set me free, baby, I'm going to go where I can get free. I'm not going to be bound to a choir when I know that the choir can't set me free. If I got to go somewhere where they speak in a prophetic word and the shackles are broken off of me, guess what? I'm going to go where I'm going to be free. You got people they want to look at in the congregation. How many of cars out there in the parking lot? Well, you got these, these churches. It's packed, but the people are racist. The people are divided. The people are separated while we sitting up here talking like our church got uh, 500 people. Our church got 100 people. Yeah, you got 100 people, but only, ain't nobody changed. There's nobody changed. Who's delivered in our churches? I'm talking about overall. Who's delivered? We got to stop lying to yourself. How come you going to keep on taking depression pills? How long you going to keep taking Prozac? You keep taking all these pills just so you can function. When the power, when, when you spoke, the word that you given is alive. The Bible said that this word will bring deliverance. It came to set the captive free. How come we're not allowing the word to set us free? And if you in a church where it can't set you free, go find a church where it can set you free. We got to stop being worried about what other people saying? We are struggling. People are struggling with their flesh. People are struggling with pornography. But yet you want to go to a church where they making you a deacon. You want to go to a church, but you don't have no power. The only thing you can say that you are good, you pay your tithes, but you can't help nobody else. We are making people sick in some of these churches. They went to church worse and they gotten worse now that they have went to church. I know somebody went to church as a, as a regular saved man. They went to the church and the church turned him out as a homosexual. Sexual. You got some of these people, they are turning, they are a satanic agents and they are turning people out. They turning them out to be whoremongers. They turning them out, they getting pregnant and they're fornicating in the church because they need people because they're not reading the Bible. Oh, my pastor loved me. I had one pastor sit up there telling a the girl, if you have sex with me, I'm going to get that rapist demon out of you. See, if people not reading their word, this is why I tell you, read your word because you want to know what I'm telling you is the truth. You got people struggling in church. You got men sitting up here bound because nobody don't have the, you got, not nobody, but some of these churches don't have no power to show them the power of Christ Jesus, to teach them how to turn down their plate and how to cry out and be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible begins to say that when the Holy Ghost come upon you, he shall give you power and what fire. You got to understand where's the fire in these churches. It's dead. And people thinking, oh, because we weak, we good. You good? Yeah, you go feed the homeless. Yeah, you put clothes on the knees. But can you change their mind? The people that's been bound, the people that's been raped, we got people in church and they are still sick because they have not gotten healed. And some of us, some leaders, we don't know how to help them get healed. And tell the truth, we ain't trying to. I'm going to say that again. And we ain't trying to get them healed. We just want to pack the church up, telling you about the story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We want to tell you about the story about Jesus. But who's getting the people delivered? Who's where the people can walk in power? I can at least say with the people that come to the church, the people that really won't change, I see transformation in their life. I see transformation. But can you tell me when you go to some of these churches, you tell me who's changing? 
Who's changing? These are the ones that are sabotaging people because they get angry. I know you didn't look at me like that. I know you didn't sit in my seat. You about to kill somebody because somebody don't sit in your seat. You about to kill somebody because you feel like they, they seem better than you. You about to kill somebody because they preach better than you. God said we got to get delivered. This spirit of sabotage will have people trying to kill and murder people. And we think that it's okay to murder our brothers and sisters. You are a murderer behind the scenes when you're talking about people when you sitting up there I can't stand them they make me sick I hope that you know they lose their mind that they, they lose their job they lose their house their car this is how saints are talking and you are not supposed to be talking like that where's your Holy Ghost your Holy Ghost supposed to convict that you supposed to told you you're not supposed to talk like that see the reason why you can talk like that because you have allowed that spirit of the murderer the spirit of the murderer to come in on the inside of you we got to begin to wake up the money spirits are on the inside inside of you when you know what you're doing is wrong, but you continue to do it and it don't bother you. You have no fear of God. And that's what's going on when you look at our nation. Everything that they're doing, they're trying to take God out of it. They're trying to desensitize you where you will sabotage yourself. They're trying to desensitize you where you won't even read the word. You don't need nobody telling you what to do. You do what you want to do. Do you not know that that's an antichrist mindset when you're not teachable, when you don't want to learn, when you don't want to be honest with yourself. The Bible said in Jeremiah, he said, your heart is de des desperately wicked. In other words, talking about your mind. Your mind is wicked when you can think of so much atrocity to happen to somebody and it don't even bother you. And this is what God was saying. When you look at even, when you look at uh, 1 Samuel 17, it talks about here, it's talked about here, even how Saul got jealous, even though God had stripped him of his kingship, but he wasn't moved out of the position. And see, a lot of times, blessings, elder, a lot of times people don't understand you have been moved. God has moved his hand off of you. You thought that you was the evangelist. You thought you was the apostle. You thought that you was the teacher. Because see, but if you don't deal with that spirit of sabotage, you don't deal with that sin, what are you talking about? That's what God told the sons of Eli. He, he told Eli, deal with your son deal with the wickedness because they was taking the Lord offerings and they was eating the offering themselves. They was doing all kind of sexual acts. They were doing all kind of things. And God told Eli, deal with your son. The simple fact, Eli did not deal with his son. God said, because you got to understand, in that point of time when you was a priest, it was going down to your lineage. Your children, 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 children will be priests. But because Eli did not deal with his sons, God began to tell Samuel, let him know that no longer I have stripped the priesthood from his generation. I have stripped the priesthood from his lineage, and I'm going to raise you up. You know what? People don't understand. The anointing have left some of these leaders. The anointing have left some of these fivefold ministers. They have in church, and people still in the churches, but they don't realize that the glory cloud has left. They jumping and they shouting and the Holy Ghost ain't there. It's a strange fire. It's a familiar fire. People don't even know the difference between God's spirit and the, and, and the demonic spirit because they don't read. They don't know the pattern of the Lord. And see, and God said, I have shifted. He said, I have shifted from that religious and thinking that you can wear the long skirts and the doodling and you thinking because you holy and you got some of the biggest whores in church. You got some of the biggest liars, the biggest, the, the, the one that would destroy people in church, but they look holy on the outside, but on the inside, you nasty. On the inside, you judgmental. On the inside, you a root worker. On the inside, you putting roots on folk. On the inside, you tearing up folk marriages. On the inside, you folk, folk paying you money to do somebody in. And you trying to tell folk. But when you look at you on the on the outside, oh, oh, she, oh, the, oh that's mother so-and-so. Oh, that's sister so-and-so. No, we're full of witches. And some of these churches are full of witches and warlocks. And you wonder why you don't see the power of God. You wonder why these young people ain't coming in. They ain't coming in because the people in the church doing the same thing they're doing out here in the world. Somebody was telling me they went to a club and they seen a pastor in the club drinking. See, you got to tell me the people in the world know what the people, they know what we shouldn't be doing. But we sabotaging ourselves, talking about you a God representative. How can you represent God when you don't understand you got curse written on you? When the word curse is written on your life, you got to understand. Go back to Jeremiah 44. 
In Jeremiah 44, God began to bring desolation to the land. God began to bring the wrath of God to the land because the children stopped being obedient. The children stopped listening. The people stopped reading their Bible. They stopped reference God. They stopped listening to God. And God said, my wrath is going to be upon the land. I'm going to take you there because I, I don't want you to think I'm just telling you something. I want you to look at uh, Jeremiah 44 because when you look at Jeremiah 44, let's look at verse 7. He said, now thus says the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel. He said, why are you doing great harm to yourselves? And so to cut off from your man, woman, child, infant from among Judah, leaving themselves without remedy. He said, provoking me to anger with the works of your hands. You're burning sacrifices to other gods in the land of Egypt, where you are entering to reside, so that you may be cut off and become a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. He said, have you forgotten the wickedness of your father, the wickedness of the king of Judah? See, we knew that our parents, we knew that they dealt witchcraft. You knew that they went to the, the they went to go see all these people to, to get some good luck oil and all this kind of stuff, and you turn around and do the same thing. The only difference, you go to church. You got to understand you sabotaging yourself because when you begin to do those things you are bringing them demonic spirits to your house. You got to understand they can find you in your house. When you up here burning incense, you put people name writing on paper and you speaking curses. The Bible says you shall reap what you sow. You got to understand the spirit realm, it recognize your words. You don't think that the atmosphere can hear? The Bible says the sun, the earth is moaning and groaning for the sons of God to manifest. You got to understand the earth is shifting as we begin to take our rightful place, but if we don't recognize that we are in sabotage, if we don't recognize what well, we hurt one another, if you don't recognize that it's time for us to change, we're trying to preach and teach to other people when we got to be honest with ourselves and say, I'm jacked up. Because can I tell you, when God used to deal with me, he said, you're murdering people when you want bad stuff to happen to them, you operating as a witch. That's how he taught me. This is why I teach what I teach because I didn't recognize that that's what I was doing. I saw my family members doing it. I saw them getting folks speaking evil of folks. And just because they said that they were mad that it was all right, knowing this ain't all right. This is not all right what we do. And we see some leaders, you the armor bearer and you and the leaders, y'all talking about people. You are praying on people in the church. You trying to make them lose their mind. You got people coming together because you want to hurt somebody. You got some people, they don't want to let you go. And they say, I'm, I'm to get them back until I drive them crazy. Do you not know some people will fast and pray until they see harm happen to you? And the Bible said they do this because of the evil nature. When they have not put God's word in their mind, when they have not become one, when they have not allowed the spirit of God to convict them, when they have not allowed the spirit of God to show them what they're doing is wrong, they have come into agreement with witchcraft and they have become satanic agents with their church going self and they go to church and they keep up mess. They go to church and they start an argument not understanding you are working for the devil. When you're stirring up gossip, when you're stirring up chaos, you are working for the devil. Not understanding. See, and this is why we got a bunch of this mess at church and people think, oh, this is just me. No, no, no. You just showing me you just work for the devil. No, you just showing me that you're not part of the God's kingdom. You're part of the other kingdom. It's two kingdoms. God's kingdom and the kingdom of darkness. And when our life do not bear fruit of that of God, you got to be honest with yourself. You are working for the devil. And saying, this is why you got to get yourself in a church where they're going to teach you the word. Because when you go to church, they're supposed to teach you about the things of the spirit. If you don't know anything about the spiritual realm, what is the purpose for you going to church? You got to learn about this invisible kingdom. How can you learn about it when what we do, it shows, it displays what kingdom I, that's operating on the inside of me. If all you hear is curses coming out of my mouth, I am showing you. What spirit is alive in me? I'm showing you what spirit is in control in me. If you find me being mean and hateful, I am showing you what spirit is in me. This stuff, it don't matter. It can be your mom and your daddy. Can I tell you a spirit don't care? A spirit have no allegiance because if that person is not submitted to God, the devil will use them, baby. This is why the Bible say a man enemy will be those in his own household. In other words, the devil, the, the spirit ain't loyal to nobody. This is why God said you got 
to get in this word and you got to let me convict you. It's time to come in the kingdom. I ain't say it's time to come in the church. I say it's time to come in the kingdom. The kingdom is on the inside of you. The Bible says, how do I know that the kingdom have come? He said, when you see devils being cast out, when you see people laying hands on the sick, the kingdom have come. If you don't see none of these things manifesting in your life, you still in the church and you have not even touched the kingdom. I'm going to say that again. If you don't see deliverance, you don't see the prophetic word. In other words, teaching the people how to speak the word of God. Teaching the people how to live the word of God. If your mindset is not being transformed. If you ain't changing in the way that you think. Changing in the way that you talk. Changing in what you're doing. You are in the church. Baby, this is the season to be in the kingdom. Because can I tell you, this is why churches are sat down. Because they have not equipped God's people. People been in church all their life, but they don't know nothing about the kingdom. What I'm talking about, some of you don't even know what I'm talking about the kingdom. The kingdom is God's invisible kingdom that lives on the inside of you. It's what the spirit of God is talking to you. It's what when you read the word and then when you go to church, what you've been studying, you hear a pastor talking about it because God is talking to you, confirming it through your pastor that you on the right world. But if you ain't, if you don't have no kind of connection, you constantly ask somebody, what does mean? What God saying? What God want me to do? And you don't know God for yourself. You are still stuck in the church age. You got to understand we are in the kingdom age. You got to understand the Bible said we're supposed to be a king and we're supposed to be a priest. If you are a priest, it's your job to get in the word. It's your job to know God yourself. Because when you begin to know God for yourself, this is how you meet him. You meet him in the word. You find him in the word. He begin to change your life in the word. So when man have gave, the doctor have gave you a death sentence. When you read the word of God, he said, with my stripes, you are healed. And when you continue to speak that word, you continue to believe the word, your body begin to become come one with what he say over what the doctor have told you and saying this is what we're supposed to be teaching you in church teaching you how to walk in miracles teaching you how to walk in signs wonders and miracles not teaching you to follow me not teaching you to look like me not teaching you whatever my apostle say the devil is alive whatever jesus say we're supposed to be teaching you about the kingdom we're supposed to be teaching you how to lay hands and how to cast out devils how to prophesy you got some people waiting on the prophetic word when the bible tell you get in the word he he said, who is the spirit of prophecy? Jesus is the spirit of the prophet. We got people waiting on the prophet and God saying, open up your book. Open up your book and open up the book and put my word in your mind. Put my word in your thought process. Put my word on the inside of you and let me change you. Let me deliver you. See, the reason why. That's right, Elder Moore. The reason why we don't see any resurrection power, because we, have, we are walking like dead men bones. In churches, we are dead. We wait on the praise team to pump us up. We wait on somebody to give us a good message for us to feel good when you're supposed to be coming with the power. The Bible said the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that resides on the inside of you. How come we're not fine? How come? I understand sometimes we have our downtime, but all the time, why do you got to keep being pumped up? You know why? Because you can't hold it. You're not, you, you, you got a weak wound. In other words, every time God gives you something, the devil is just snatching it away from you because you you are not, you don't know how to hold the word. You got to understand that when Mary got pregnant, when Mary was overshadowed with the Holy Spirit, she was a virgin and they told her she was going to have and conceive a child. How could she hold that? She had to hold it in her mind. She had to go against all odds and say, you know what? I'm going to believe what God say. Regardless of what I feel, I'm going to believe what God word say. Regardless of what man say, I'm going to believe what God say. But we keep telling God, I'm going through. We keep telling God, this is going. And he's saying, get in my word. And transform it. He said, I'm waiting on you to do it. We sitting up here waiting on the prophet to call your name and God said, I'm waiting on you to get in this word and transform yourself. He's waiting on us people of God. But see this spirit of sabotage. Sabotage will get you at a place where you waiting on somebody to do it for you and God is saying you do it. But you in a church you somewhere where they're not equipping you to do it. And instead of you trying to find somebody that's going to help you to do it, you get mad and say, God ain't faithful. God ain't helping you. God don't love you. God do love you. That's just like if you were sitting at home and you wanted something to eat, and you know you don't have no food in the refrigerator, you're going to leave your house and you're going to go to somebody's house that's going to give you some food. But yet we're sitting dead churches that are not teaching us anything. 
and we will reject it because we don't want to go somewhere that's going to help us because we're afraid what it look like. You got to go back into the scriptures. Jesus, you got to understand, Jesus started out small. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they didn't like him because he was wrecking their order. He wasn't coming with religion. Jesus is coming with relationship. He's coming to show you that you need him. He's coming to show you what you're thinking evil and you wanting to hurt people. He want to convict you to show you that you are wrong. What you're talking about people, how you try to, 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 to get revenge on people who hurt you. Yes, I know what some of these people did were wrong. Yeah, I've been hurt too. But guess what? The Bible say, turn them over to me. He say, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So therefore, if he say, turn them over to him, who am I that I'm going to chase these people? I'm going to stop serving God trying to chase people to try to hurt them. Because this is what you got people doing. They have left God because they are obsessed with trying to hurt you. They are, or you may be the one, you are obsessed because you want to hurt other people. You want to make people suffer because you're saying they made you suffer. You want other people to be sick because you're saying they made me sick. That's not the ways of the kingdom of God. Because if you read the word of God, you will find out we're, we're, what we're doing is not God. And don't think just because you're checking the block, because you went to church and you put in $100 that God is pleased. God don't want your money when it's dirty. That's why he say, you got to understand, in Acts 16, the woman with the spirit of, the, a spirit of divination, she was saying these are the servants of the most high God. What she was saying to Paul was true. But the spirit that, that it came from out of, it was a contaminated spirit. It was a spirit of divination. In other words, she used demonic powers to give her information to prophesy to people. And people think just because people prophesy the right word to you, it don't mean that it's coming from God. This is why God said you got to begin to get the Holy Ghost for real because the Holy Ghost will begin to speak to you. You'll see somebody flowing and the Holy Ghost will say, uh-uh, something ain't right. Something ain't right. But see, we just look up. We hear somebody saying something good to our flesh. You know if you sleeping in the bed with somebody, but they telling you, who God blesses on you. who you're a millionaire. Shame on you. You thinking that God finna bless you and you tearing up somebody's house. Come on here. Be honest with yourself. You sitting up here destroying people or uh, uh, families with your mouth. You destroying relationships. You destroying your family relationship. Talking about this, telling them what this person said. But then you get to church and the pastor said, Ooh, God said that promotion on you. How you think that promotion going to be on you for real? That promotion on you, but you causing your brother and sister to turn against each other. You causing mama not to talk to her children because you telling them what they said. What You telling them everything else, but you ain't telling them what you said. No, God is not pleased with this. And we got people, and we're afraid to tell people the truth because I don't want to lose them. Guess what? I'd rather for you to be mad at me and it convict you and you turn than for me to act like everything is all good and I don't say nothing and you go to hell. The devil is a lie. See, people got a strange kind of love. They say that they love you, but they won't tell you when stuff going on. They won't tell you when things ain't no good for you because I don't. it ain't my business. What, what Bible have you read? Are you your brother's keeper? Are you your sister's keeper? Do you see how people are dying? People that you know are dying like flies. You don't even, we don't have time to keep playing church. We don't have time to keep acting like, you know, it's okay. It's not okay. Because some of these people are dying. You know people are wrong and you won't say nothing. That's right, Minister Derry. You, we're hurting people. People you know who you need to tell you sorry. You won't say nothing. You're walking in the spirit of pride. That's what sabotage do. I ain't, nothing. I, ain't, I ain't gonna apologize till they apologize to me. I ain't gonna say nothing till they say nothing to me. You sabotaging yourself. Because you gotta understand, the Bible says, love and kindness have I brought you. Have I, I came to you with love and kindness, and who are you to tell somebody if they don't come first? Sometimes God will have you to go to the people, and you've been the one that's been wrong, but He said, I want you to fix it. And He'll tell you, you go and you repent to them just to make peace. Do you not know we're supposed to be peacemakers? But that spirit of sabotage will make you think that you're arrogant, that you're above, you're, you're above saying I'm sorry. That spirit of self-righteous will make you think you got it going on because you suited up. You're driving nice. You're living in a nice car. 
I mean, a nice house and you driving a nice ride. And so you'll think that you're above saying you sorry. Hurting people. How in the world are we sitting up here hurting people? Saints hurting other people. Can I tell you, even being in church, I had other members hurt other members. It was nothing that I did. People left the church because the other members hurt the other members. That's sabotage. How in the world you say that you're coming, you're supposed to be coming to a place where we're supposed to be building up God's kingdom, but you pushing people away because you jealous or you don't like them. No, we got some serious issues. And we up here playing like all is well and God said, no, all is not well. And he said, and I'm not pleased with this. And my thing is, you got to ask yourself, how come you don't feel no conviction? You know why? Because the spirit of God has left. Some saints don't even recognize the spirit of God has left them. They still go into church. The spirit of God has left the church. You don't, feel the, the, you don't feel the power of God. You don't feel the chills. You don't feel the warmth. You don't feel nothing. The spirit of God has left. And you got saints because you think you showed up at church. You think because I watch it on TV. You think because I read my Bible. But he left because that's what he did to Saul. Saul was still operating as a king, and he did not know that God had left and had replaced him. God had already sent the prophet to anoint David, but he thought that he was still king. He had no idea that the anointing had left off his life. You know when people don't understand anointing leave out their life, they'll go see a witch because that's what Saul did. When Samuel told him that the kingdom had been stripped from him, because he did not deal with his issues. He did not deal with his wounds. This is why I'm telling you, we got to deal with our wounds. You got to deal with your insecurities. You got to deal with your hurt. You got to deal with the bitter. You got to deal with the anger. You got to deal with the low self-esteem. You got to deal with the self-pity. If you don't deal with these, the jealousy, the competition, you don't deal with these things, can I tell you, the anointing of God will leave off of you and he will give your assignment to somebody else. Keep thinking that it's going to be always with you. Ask Eli's sons. It got stripped from Eli's sons because they was disobedient and they did not hear the voice of God. Now, people of God, you hear people talking about all these blessings. But if all these blessings were here, why are we in the midst of a pandemic? Why is it all over the world? Because there have been rebellion and disobedience all over the world. This is a time that we got to repent and we got to say, God, I've been sabotaging myself. I've been sabotaging my family. I brought shame. I brought dishonor to your kingdom. And I've been chasing after the world. I've been chasing after mammon. I've been chasing after men and women. I've been chasing after uh, drugs. I've been chasing after sex. You're chasing after the things of the world. Lord, forgive me. You got to understand right here, when you're in the kingdom, it's going to be sacrificial. It's going to take, some people are going to leave you. Because they don't want to hear the truth. When you begin to tell them, girl, no, I ain't finna mess up nobody, Mary. No, I'm not finna talk against them. No, I'm not finna do this. You gonna see people are gonna try to make you. The, the Bible say they would think they doing God a service by trying to kill you because you convict them. I'm telling you what the words say. I ain't telling you what I say. Because people will turn on you because they don't want to be, they don't, they, they, they don't want to be convicted. They don't want to change. They want to do whatever they want to do. And that's why the Bible say in Proverbs, I mean, Ecclesiastes 3, he said, without, without the spirit of God, man is like a beast. In other words, man can't be tamed. This is why we got to begin to say, you know what? I've been operating in sabotage. When I ain't been trying to read this word, you got to be intentional. You got to be intentional. Just like how you brush your teeth, you intentional. You got to be intentional. I'm going to get in this word. I'm going to turn the TV off. I'm going to turn the music off. And I'm going to talk to God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commune with him. I'm going to let this word convict me. I'm going to let this word change me. I'm going to become one with this word, even when it ain't popular, even when people talking about me, even when people turning their back on me, I got to become one with him. 
we got to begin to understand. God is going to deal with you. He ain't going to come. When you stand before him, he ain't going to talk about because you, you came to the church. Some of us been in church so long, you supposed to be preaching, teaching, casting out devils, and you still a baby. You still in kindergarten. How long you going to keep doing what you're doing? God said, I want to hear your mind. But you got to change what you're doing. How you going to talk about you walking in power, but your mindset ain't changed? You don't even put the word in you. You got to put the word in your mind and you got to be intentional. Instead of cussing people out, I got to stop cussing. Are we perfect? No, we're not perfect. But it should be some change. And that's it. Woman got, and you got to be intentional to read the word. The Bible say meditate on the word day and night. It didn't just say read the word. Meditate means to ponder, to look over, to think it through. You got to let it convict you. So if I'm reading the word and he say, forgive your neighbor seven times seven. The first thing I ask God, okay, who, who is it that I got in my heart that I'm still holding in unforgiveness? And I ask him and I be quiet. Because you got to understand, you reading what you reading. Even before I gave this word to you, I had to let it hit me first. Whenever you reading the word of God, he got to deal with you first. It ain't just for you to read it and say, I read it. He's Because he's got to begin to reveal to you the word of God is light. So when you read it, he's shining the light in your mind of darkness. He's showing you what's in your mind that's been dark to say, uh-uh. You got to stop doing this. You got to stop cussing people out. You got to stop cursing people because you don't like them. You got to stop speaking evil out of your mouth. The Holy Spirit is going to convict you. But when you keep doing what you're doing, this is why it's sabotage. Because there's no change. You go to church, you read your Bible, but there's no change in your life. You still doing the same thing that people out there in the world doing. The only difference, they don't go to church. Shame on you going to church and name nothing in your life change. No, and you can't come with that Steve Harvey. God ain't through with me yet. You, 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 you still lying and you've been saying that for 10 years. No, you don't want to change. You got to make it up your mind. Do the truth hurt? Yes, it hurts. But the Bible say the truth shall make you free. Do you want to keep walking around being in bondage? Being in bondage in your mind. You can't see yourself doing nothing else. You can't see yourself but working nine to five. And God wants you to use your grandmama chicken recipes to start your own restaurant. But you don't have enough faith because in your mind, you stuck on that job. You in a bondage mindset. God saying, I want to bless you with a house, but you've been in that apartment. Everybody in my family been in the apartment. God want to bless you with a house, but you will not allow that spirit of fear. You keep letting fear paralyze you, and God want to give you something better, and you don't want to go forward because you're saying, but I I'm afraid. I don't know what to do. No, we've been in bondage in our mind, and God said we've been hurting ourselves. We've been doing it. And then we will sabotage other people because they want better. You hear your friend say she want a house and you'll talk about somebody else. She too old to get a house. She's 60 years old and she want to get a house. How silly is that? Why are you cursing this lady? Why are you talking against her? She want to go back to school. Why are, you trying to, why are you trying to murder her with your words? You don't want to go back to school. So why are you trying to knock somebody else from going to school? This lady want to get mad. She knows she's too old to get mad. Who are you to tell somebody that? If God has promised her something, who are you to try to stop somebody? But you want to sabotage because you don't have enough boldness to do what You don't have enough faith to do what God told you to do. So you want to try to stop somebody else. That makes you a worker of darkness. That makes you a worker of iniquity. Some people, we curse our grandchildren, grandparents. He's so bad. He's so stupid. He's so numb. You, the enemy is using you to curse your seed. You're supposed to be a blessing, not a curse. Why are you cursing your family? We got to stop. This is straight sabotage. And you go to church. You don't even go to church to hear the word. You go to church to talk about people. Well, if you talking about what they got on, won't you go in their closet? Won't you go in your closet and find the lady something to put on? Matter of fact, why won't you write her a check to go get her some money to buy some, to give her some money to buy some clothes? 
See, we don't want to do what believers are supposed to do, but we want to tear people down. That makes you a worker of darkness. If you can't help me, don't talk about me. If you ain't going to be over any influence in my life, don't talk about me then. Because the only thing you're doing is cursing and you're trying to destroy the kingdom of God. Stop even in our churches. Stop tearing down your families. Sometimes you need to be quiet. You the one that you got loose lips. You telling everybody what everybody said. You are the one that's stirring up mess in the family. You the one doing it. And you sit up there. The family just messy. No, you messy. You the one sabotaging the work. God wanted you, you to bring healing, but you bring in division and separation. I know I said a lot of scriptures. But I'm telling you, we got to deal with this spirit of sabotage. We upset with God because we felt like, Lord, help me. But then, yeah, you don't want to change how you're thinking. You want to keep, the Bible says death and life is in the power of your tongue. You still want to keep saying negative stuff. But you're talking about, I know, I know, but you keep speaking negative. You are sabotaging yourself. If the spirit realm is rant by words, if you keep speaking negative, you got to understand you cursing yourself. The devil don't have to do it. You doing it. You pulling the own trigger on yourself. You putting it on your family by speaking it. If I don't have anything good to say, I keep my mouth shut. Before I say something negative, even if my children are doing something I don't like, I just be quiet. And I begin to say what the word is saying about. Did it always be like that? No, I was always saying the opposite. And God say, you are hindering your prayers. You are sabotaging your children. You sabotaging your own prayers. This is why we got to change our inside. We trying to change the outside. No, we got to change the inside because the inside is dead man bones. It's dead. We are spiritual. Some of us are spiritually dead. You know the scriptures, but they don't have no power for you. I heard somebody say, I was rebuking the devil. Ain't nothing happen. I said, ain't nothing happen because you don't have no light in you. You full of darkness. The, the, the spirit is not going to listen to, the spirit ain't going to sit up. No devil ain't going to listen to you and you ain't got no power. You telling the devil what your pastor said. You telling the devil what your apostle say. No, you tell the devil what God's word say because you got in this word yourself and you know what it says. You know it to work for you personally. You got a knowledge because you had a breakthrough. But you can't say nothing if you don't know him personally. We got to stop being an imposter in the kingdom. We acting like church folks. God is looking for a people that will be people of the kingdom. People of the kingdom, Christ is your head and we are the body. He tell you how to think. He tell you what to do and you begin to do it. That's just like how your brain control your body. Christ is supposed to be controlling us, but we're supposed to allow him to control us. So you read the Bible so that he can show you how to live in his kingdom. And so you get power. You get power when you're going through and you speak the word. That's how you get power. You get power when you're fasting and praying and you're turning away from doing evil. And you're doing what the word of God say. That's how you get anointed. Cussing folks out. You don't get no power when you're doing whatever you feel like doing. You don't get power like that. You get power when you say, Lord, it's me. I've been jealous. I've been envious. Lord, it was me. I've been trying to tell. When you tell on yourself, you ain't waiting on the devil. You telling on yourself. Because you're saying, I've been letting the devil use me. I've been letting the devil use my mind as a trash can. I've been letting the devil use my mouth to destroy people. I've been letting the devil tell me what to do. No, you got to stop. God ain't going to put no gun to you. No, he said the Holy Ghost would give you power. He would give you power. to the, One of the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. You can prophesy to me, but you ain't got no self-control. You mean you can tell me what does says the Lord, but you can't control your flesh? I beg to differ what Holy Ghost you got. We're not faithful and we're not loyal. Some of us are selling God out for a platform. We're selling God out for a title. We're selling God out because we want to be seen instead of being healed. I don't know about you, but I got to be healed. Because ain't, what, what good is it to be seen and I don't have no power? 
What good is to say that I preached a good message, but nobody got delivered? It don't do me no good. I got to begin to allow God to deal with me so that when I preach and teach, it will convict people and people want to change. That's when the power of God is on a person. But when you don't have no conviction, you might well say, no, let me turn that off. You ain't helping me. No, tell me the truth about me. Tell me because I know I ain't all good. I'm the apostle and I know I ain't all good. Sometimes I got my attitude. Sometimes I be wanting to cut folks out. I'm like, Lord, help me, Jesus. I'm a hot mess. I'm a wretch undone. Deal with me. Because he'll show me you got to die to that mindset. You got to die to letting them push your butts. We got to be honest with ourselves and stop this foolishness. If this message been a blessing to you, share it with somebody. You ain't got to share it to your page. You can share it up on the messenger. If I hit you, sow a seed on it. What's the purpose of sowing a seed? You're sowing a seed because you're saying what was said, that was me. And I'm sowing seed because I know that this truth and I need this truth to grow in my life. This is where you got to understand when you're sowing in the midst of a famine. The Bible say in Genesis 26 and 12, Isaac became a wealthy man because he sowed a seed in the midst of famine. You sow when you feel the anointing. You sow when something convicts you. And you know that that's the word. That's when you sow. We got to start doing the word because a lot of times we sowing it to people who don't live off a flip. And you wonder why your life is still jacked up. Because you sowing it to you sowing it to bad seed, bad soil. You want it to sow into something that's gonna bring a word that's gonna bring a harvest to you. You sow into truth. Because you saying, Lord, deliver me. I'm on here. It ain't because I'm saying I got it together. I'm on here because I'm telling you. I'm walking you through the process as he delivered me through stuff. Then I come and I share with you where he delivered me from. Can I tell you, we're going to always be going through deliverance as long as we are on earth. But it's one thing, I guess what? I'm not going to be how I was last year. I'm not going to be how I was last month. I'm going to make it up my mind. I'm going to be daily getting myself together, allowing the word of God to deal with me. So let's get this together. Amen. And so as I close out of this week of deliver me from me, I'm not going to be doing the, there will be no 3 a.m. prayer um, tonight. Um, we're gonna, uh, I'm not gonna do it tonight. So, um, I'll finish next week. Um, I start back next week with the prayer, but I wouldn't, will not be doing no 3 a.m. prayer tonight. And I, so I make sure that I do another, uh, sign to let people know that there will be no 3 a.m. prayer. Amen. And so as I close out, amen. And you see the woman of God, she said, it's good ground. You got to understand that, you know what, that this is the time that we, it's time for us to manifest who God called us to be. I ain't on here because I'm telling you I want no platform. I'm up here because I told God if he delivered me, i help his people. That's why I'm up here. You got to understand, it costs me to be up here. I get hit when I get up here because I say what he tell me to say. And guess what? It's not popular. And when it ain't popular, you got to know warfare come with it. And so you got to understand if you're going to walk in deliverance, you got to be prepared for the fight. You got to be prepared to stand up in truth. Because when God began to, to, to build you up and raise you up, he told Jeremiah, I'll make you a fortified city. In other words, when they throw the darts at you, no weapon formed against you. You may hit me, but guess what? It won't prosper. You may try to destroy me, but guess what? I'm going to get back up. Because why? Because the greater one lives on the inside of me. So as I close out of Deliver Me from me, I am Apostle Elisa. I'm signing out, and I will see you next Thursday. Amen? You all be blessed and deal with that spirit of sabotage. Break it off of your life. Tell that devil he's a liar and no longer allow that spirit to destroy your life and to destroy your family life. If you used to be the one that would sabotage people, stop it. Stop it. Give your life back to the Lord. He said he's married to the backslider. Can I tell you, you can be backslid in the church. You can be backslid in preaching. Because when you stop living this, you have already backslid. It's not based on because you're showing up. It's based on your fruit. Amen? Go back to the Bible. Because the Bible is going to tell you the truth. I love you all with the love of the Lord. i see you all next week.